Joseph DiBenedetto is a criminal defense attorney who's live with us in studio this afternoon and has some of his own thoughts on this. Joseph, nice to see you. Good to see you, Chef. You said you've done these cases all the time and you, and you got your finger on this. Without a doubt. I mean, at first blush, th there's, there's no denying that from the surface it appears to be some sort of cover-up. But when you look at the finer details, there are telltale signs of this girl actually lying. She is leaving her home at 1 a.m. in the morning, and, and nobody forced her to drink. And what happens? She gets caught by her mom. She's embarrassed. And, and the easy way out here is, mom, someone took advantage of me. But what did she expect to happen at 1 a.m. in the morning after sneaking out? I'm not saying, assuming that these facts are accurate and this did happen, I'm not saying that she deserved to be raped. But knowing the facts as we do here, including what the prosecutor has set forth, this case is going nowhere, and it's going nowhere quick. Well, the prosecutor didn't take it anywhere. The prosecutor declined to prosecute. A lot of other events came together, and then the prosecutor said, if I'm getting all this pressure, I'll bring in a special prosecutor. Exactly. He's saying, I have nothing to hide. I've done my job. I've done it thoroughly. He has a sworn deposition from this girl. What happened at the, at the point of investigation when she had her opportunity to come out and say, hey, I was taken advantage of. What does she do? She invokes her Fifth Amendment right. That tells you a lot. A, a lawyer for Barnett said in a statement that Barnett, quote, cooperated it with the investigation and freely admitted that there was indeed a sexual encounter. While many may find Mr. Barnett's behavior reprehensible, the legal issue was whether a crime was committed. The prosecutor, in not prosecuting, decided that he did not believe a crime had been committed. Without a doubt. We, we all know that there's no crime in, uh, in the state of Missouri of having sex, two, two minors having sex. The only issue is whether or not one is incapacitated. Um, given, the, given the facts the way we know them, this is not a case that's being tried. Right now it's being tried in a court of public opinion, but in a court of law it's totally different. The issue is can you prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt? There are too many inconsistent statements. You can't make them disappear. This case is doomed. A lawyer for Barnett again here quoting, this time, the complaining witness did testify with numerous inconsistencies and changes to previous stations, uh, statements. When the alleged victim's mother was questioned about these changes, she freely admitted that her daughter does not always tell the truth. All of those are the facts and accusations in this case. But you, what you've done, Joseph, is taken an alleged victim of rape and turned her into a liar and, and a crime committer. Well, that's she, a that's a that's a far jump from that, a thousand miles away. That's that's one way to look at it. She wouldn't be assuming that that is the case. She wouldn't be the first, and she wouldn't be the last. As an attorney, the way the way I've been taught to analyze these types of cases, when you focus on the detail, the details tell it all, and the details here clearly show that there are significant inconsistencies, which prove that this case cannot be brought in court and proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Joseph T. Benedetto. Uh, the facts are online uh, at foxnews.com. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you.